Hello, this is Plato the Buffalo, and welcome to this special audio cassette from Adventures from the Book of Virtues and Chick fil A. Doesn't it feel good when someone gives you a present? We all like presents on our birthday, but did you know it can feel even better to give someone a present? When you give something to others, it's showing them you care about them and you appreciate them. It's called generosity. Generosity is a great virtue because it shows we care and we are willing to share what we have. It's especially important when we need to help those who are not as fortunate as ourselves like people who need food, shelter, and clothing. But true generosity is about more than just giving things or money. It's about giving of yourself. Real generosity, giving unselfishly, can be difficult for some people. It's like the other day, when my friends Zach and Annie were collecting cans of food for the homeless people at a shelter. They were doing a fine thing, but they were not being truly unselfish. Well, listen for yourself. It seems a shame to do all this work and nobody knows we did it. Yeah, it'd be nice if they knew who to thank for all this stuff. Hey, we could have a ceremony and make an official presentation. I can see it all now. We could set up bleachers and sell hot dogs. The school band could play. Mm, I don't think we should have a ceremony. <gasps> a picnic, that's the way to go. With games and sing-alongs. Oh, and a big banner that says Annie and Zach's can good day. You mean Zach and Annie's, don't you? I don't think so. And that's when I showed up. Hi, kids. It's good to see the two of you working so hard to help others. Yeah, Miss Generosity here wants her name listed first on the banner. Banner? Mm hmm? Well, my name comes first in the alphabet. Yeah, but the whole project was my idea in the first place. In my book, generosity is not just a giving away of valuables. There's also a generosity of spirit between friends. I remember a story called Rocking Horse Land, in which a young prince named Fredolin learned that very lesson. On the morning of his fifth birthday, Prince Fredolin woke up both eyes at once. Happy birthday to me! <gasps> Fredlin was just as excited as any child on his birthday, but being a prince, he had much higher expectations. He jumped out of bed and ran to his playroom. As he opened the door, he saw the room had been filled with birthday presents. He sat down in the middle of the floor and began tearing open the boxes. Toy after toy after toy. But Fredolin was not very impressed. Being a prince, he already had just about every kind of toy you can imagine. He wanted something really special. Then, over by the window, he saw a magnificent rocking horse. Its colors were gleaming and it was fitted with a royal saddle. He ran to the rocking horse and mounted up. All day long he rode his marvelous charger, pretending they were battling the enemy. Oh, my beauty, into the fray. Let no one escape. Faster, faster, up, up and over. Aha! After a full day of riding, the young prince was tired and went to bed. He slept soundly, but for some reason, he awoke in the middle of the night. He had an eerie feeling, like something was wrong. He got out of bed and walked to his playroom to check on his rocking horse, but it was gone. Then he looked about the room. 
and over by the back window, there stood the horse. Somehow, it had moved. Fredlin realized that a rocking horse that can move itself would be a very special horse indeed. He walked over to the horse and noticed something else very peculiar. A tear coming from the horse's eye. You're crying. B but why? To Fredolin's amazement, the horse spoke back. I, I weep because I am a prisoner. Open the window, master, and let me go. Let you go? You belong to me. I'll never let you go. But my brothers call to me from Rocking Horse Land, and my mare and foals whinny to me. Rocking Horse Land? Is there really such a place? Oh, please, master. Let me go tonight, and I will return tomorrow. How can I be sure you'll come back? In my mane, you will find a single white hair. Pull it and wrap it around your finger. Will this hurt? No. Wrap it around your finger. As long as it is there, I must go or return at your bidding. In the morning, simply call my name, Roland, and I shall come back to you. Now, Fredolin had never given away anything in his life. If he loved something, he held it close and squeezed it hard. But as he gazed into Roland's eyes, Fredolin knew that he couldn't be happy unless the horse was happy too. Go then, Roland, for I love you. But return when it is day. <laughs> With that, the beautiful rocking horse flew out of the open window and streaked across the night sky, far out of view. And all that night, Fredlin dreamed of his beautiful horse, happy at last in rocking horse land. In the morning, the prince went to the window and called for him. Roland, Roland, come back, Roland. <gasps> Roland, you came back. And are you happy now? Ah, oh, sweet prince. Oh, kind master. Fredlin and Roland played together day after day. And each night the prince would set Roland free. And every morning the rocking horse returned. And a whole year went by. Then one morning, Fredlin woke up to find he was six years old. Another birthday and more presents. But this was to be no ordinary birthday, because this year the prince's father gave Fredlin a real horse. He ran outside and mounted up, and they rode about the countryside. <laughs> Ford, my beauty! Run like the wind! They shall not escape us! All that day, and every day thereafter, Fredlin rode his new stallion and quite forgot Roland. Months passed before Fredlin realized what he had done. Alone one night, he remembered his rocking horse and went running to his playroom. There, by the window, stood Roland. Oh, dear prince and kind master, my heart breaks for a sight of my native land. May I not visit there tonight? The young prince was full of shame at having forgotten his old friend. Of course I'll let you go. Oh, kind master. Goodbye, brave Roland. Go and be happy in your native land. And so Roland returned to Rocking Horse Land forever. Fredolin never again asked Roland to come back. And that, Annie and Zack, is an example of how generosity works between friends. I think I see what you mean. It's the giving that's important, not getting the credit for it, right? It's not that we want to brag or anything, not really. We're just proud we're giving people something they can really use. Yeah, that's the kind of gift that really makes you feel good. The important kind. 
the kind that's really worth giving. You have every right to be proud. You've worked very hard, and your gift will do a lot of good. Seems to me I was reading a story just the other day about a completely different type of gift. The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry. There was a lady named Della who saved all year to buy her husband Jim a Christmas present. It was the day before Christmas, and she had found the perfect gift for Jim. A watch fob. A fob is the ornament at the end of a watch chain that keeps the chain attached to your vest. But there was a problem. The fob cost much more than the one dollar and 87 cents she had saved. The stores would be closing in only a few hours for Christmas Eve, so she needed to act quickly. As she walked down the street, she saw a shop where wigs are made. And in the window was a sign that said, Sell us your hair. Money paid now. Della had very long hair, which Jim greatly admired. But she knew she would have to sell her hair to get the money she needed for Jim's present. The owner greeted her as she entered the wig shop. May I help you? Do you... do you buy hair? Well, it says so in the window, doesn't it? How... how much can you give me for mine? Hmm... Twenty dollars. Now, are you sure you want to sell it, dear? Won't your husband mind? Oh, do it quick and give me the money. So the wig maker cut Della's hair off and paid her. Della ran down the street just in time to buy the watch fob for Jim. She entered a jewelry store, and the salesman asked if he could show her anything. Yes, please. May I see that platinum watch fob? My husband Jim has the handsomest watch. It's his pride and joy, passed down from his father and his grandfather before that. Is the chain platinum as well? Of course, madame. How much is it? Twenty-one dollars. I'll take it. And could you please wrap it? Della went home and waited for Jim. It was Christmas Eve, and she was so happy that she had a gift for him. But she was also afraid of what Jim would say when he saw her short hair. Please, please let him think I'm still pretty. Della, I'm home. Merry Christmas. His eyes were fixed on Della with an expression she could not read. It was not anger, nor surprise, nor horror. Jim, darling, don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off and sold it because I couldn't live through Christmas without giving you a present. You cut off your hair. Oh, now, Jim, you're starting to scare me a little. I only did it for you because it's Christmas. Don't, don't you like me just as well without it? Of course I do. There's nothing you could do that would make me love you any less. It's just that, well, open your present and you'll see why I'm surprised. Jim gave Della a small gift box. She tore off the wrap and inside there was a beautiful set of combs. <gasps> Why, Jim, there, there. <laughs> shh, shh, it's all right. Your hair grows back fast. You said so yourself. Then Della asked Jim to open his present. What a surprise this would be for Jim. Isn't it a dandy, Jim? Put it on your watch right now. I want to see how it looks. <laughs> I don't have the watch, Dell. I sold it to buy your combs. This may seem like a story of two somewhat foolish people, but let me tell you, their gifts came from their hearts. Of all who give and receive gifts, such as they are wisest. Everywhere they are the wisest. They are the Magi. Gosh, they gave away what they loved the most just so they could give something to each other. But at the end, they were happy. I guess their joy really did come from giving the gifts. That's right, Zach. If you sit down at Set of Sun and count the acts that you have done, and counting find one self-denying deed, one word that eased the heart of him who heard, one glance most kind that fell like sunshine where it went, then you may count that day well spent.
There is no measuring the human heart. It's wider than the ocean, deeper than the dark. Take away the stars and the setting sun. The heart still finds room to give the gift of love to everyone. Thanks for listening, kids. And remember to look for adventures from the Book of Virtues on your local PBS station. And to collect all the audio cassettes at Chick-fil-A.